Anyway, after a crash landing in Cloudy Park, we're going to uh, World 6-2 for the most frustrating rainbow drop in the entire game. Um, yeah, that's that's just the facts. Uh, and my name is Vanilla Ice, and that's the facts. And that's a straight up fact. That's what he says. Ugh, such a jerk of a of a guy of a white boy who thinks he can rap and, and therefore, like, cuts his hair in the shape of a brick wall. Um, anyway... Uh... Today is still March 20th. Um... Just much later in the day. Uh, getting to be close to my bedtime. And, um... <laughs> I've spent today, like, recording some piano and some accordion and taking a walk, which was nice, and doing some homework, and, uh, did I do anything else? I played Creeks some, that's, that was fun, I've been, been playing Creeks, uh, I've been playing Fantasy Star 4 a lot more often, but, uh, I have been playing Creeks a little bit, uh, Creeks is a... Recent-ish game by Amanita Design, and anyone who knows me knows that I'm in love with Amanita Design. Uh, they are some of my favorite indie developers on the planet, and anything that they make is just a work of art. Um, so I'm having fun with Creeks. It's... the, the tone is like horror-ish, but not really. It's like creepy and weird-ish, but like, I don't know. <laughs> the art design and and the sound design and the music is still like quirky as ever, quirky and humorous and um and the music is done by Flowex as far as I can tell. I just know his style, so I assume that the music is done by him and I love it. Um, and this is a pretty major spoiler for anybody who hasn't played the game, but like the first hour or so of the game is avoiding um, these like nightstand drawers that uh, turn into like very territorial dogs and uh, <laughs> you have to like figure out how to avoid them. Um, and if you turn on the light, they just go back to being nightstands. It's so weird and interesting. And then there are like these uh, crow magistrates that are just kind of like wandering around doing their thing. And uh, that's Gooey. He restores some health. Um, he's not a major character, as you can probably tell. There's actually a female Gooey. <laughs> If you really want to go for 100% in this game, you have to find female Gooey, and there's like a 5% chance of her showing up. Um, it's so stupid, but it's actually kind of funny. Um, so the gimmick of this rainbow drop is that it requires all three partners, and it is very time consuming. I spent about half an hour trying to get this freaking rainbow drop. Um, it involves, like, three different mini-bosses, um, not counting the one in, uh, 3-2, which I usually fight, uh, to get kind anyway, so that's, like, four mini-bosses. Uh, this, this being the third one. And then this is the part with Rick. Uh, you need Rick and Spark. Uh... For the second time, I think it's kind of like, you needed Rick and Spark for World 5, and now you need Rick and Spark again. It's like, I feel like it's a bit of a cop-out on the game designer's part. And also this room is like a, a rainbow drop room, except not really. Um, here you need Koo. Uh, you just need Koo to fly against some wind. Uh, you don't need to hold on to Spark, actually. And here I was probably taking a break reading the walkthrough or something. And I went in this door, and that was a huge mistake. <laughs> so, <laughs> I must have, oh gosh, I must have went back to World 3-2 to get kind and redo this crap about seven times. 
Um, it took me about half hour. I, I edited it all down to 11 minutes for your viewing pleasure. And uh, so that I could vlog about stuff, I guess. School has gotten pretty busy, even though I'm at only actually sitting for like two classes. I'm just doing a bunch of my own projects and they're keeping me pretty busy. Um, I'm not too stressed. There's not too much of a reason to be stressed, um, except some things are just weird. Some things I have to depend on other people and some sometimes we don't always communicate clearly. I don't know, but, but that that happens in school, and that's just part of being an adult. So you have to get used to it, even though it is like annoying, majorly annoying. Um, I don't know, but that's not that important. And then, oh, my personal life is still a bit isolated. But I have some good friends, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I wanted a relationship or something at this point. It is kind of weird, you know, being old enough to have one, but st still saying, like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, you know, something that's on its way. Uh, but I don't have much to complain about. Uh, I watched Spotlight. Uh, my parents uh, finally caved in and got Disney+. Plus. I say caved in because we don't usually get a lot of s streaming services. I mean, we're like antenna TV people, and uh, having a streaming service is like a big deal for us, and I just froze my program. That's not a good thing. Uh, crap. Seven minutes and twelve seconds. Anyway, oh. I have no sound. Okay, I do have sound. It's just weird. My headphones have like a short in them or something. Very old headphones with a, like a ten foot long cord. And they're some of the only good headphones that I have left in my house. Because my dad and I both got like a pair of urban ears. Um... But uh, urban ears are so nice and they're so cheap, you know, compared to headphones that are like a hundred dollars. Um, but for some reason, both pairs of urban ears didn't last us more than like uh, a couple years. Um, Ku and Spark is lightning, and as you can see, that's not doing much damage on this guy. This guy is a uh, Bernie, the teleporting ninja, and. Uh, He's one of the weirder mini-bosses in this game. He kind of reminds me of a Mega Man mini-boss. I don't know, I just get that feeling. All the other mini-bosses are like these goofy things, like ice chefs and f freaking rocks and umbrellas with faces and jellyfish. And then there's this guy who's just like this futuristic teleporting ninja. He feels very out of place in a Kirby game, but whatever. So you need Cutter, and uh, here's what I went and did. You have to go and you survive this crap, which you could have Koo. You don't need Koo, uh, but yeah, that happened. Um, here's the rainbow drop room, and I just got here, and I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm a sad boy. So here we are, back to Blocky, Russell the Blockhead. Those are my official designations for those two mini-bosses. Russell the Blockhead and Bernie the Teleporting Ninja. Everybody's playing Ninja Gaiden. And Ninja Gaiden. And then there were more of us. And, and then... There was a, a problem, and we got arrested. And we got arrested for selling illegal copies of Pokemon Platinum. Um, Russian version. No, I don't know. 
I don't know what I'm talking about because it is a Saturday and Saturday is uh, a, a gender neutral day uh, with political implications for the stars above. <laughs> I don't know. I am in. I am purposely trying to be nonsensical, so don't worry. I'm not trying to be insane. Ah, oh, I could have. I that could have been a quick kill. I could have got him in like five seconds. These fireballs have such a weird pattern. They like go across and then they shoot straight up. So if you you think you're like jumping over them to avoid them and then and then they nail you. <laughs> They're so weird. This guy is so weird. I don't like him. Alright, so we're down to one hit, and we finally have Cutter ability. And watch this. That was two times in a row. Three times in a row. That's so close. An inch away from screwing this entire thing up. Less than an inch. You know. This being a Game Boy screen. Anyway, I will have to end this episode there. Thank you for joining.